All right, we're getting her done today. Well, sort of, because I think we're gonna be out of our uh, geotextile fabric that we're gonna put in the raised bed. Steve is doing the brawn, the brawn part of the job, which is uh, basically, I took the big chunky stones, put them on the bottom, and now Steve's doing like the number two stones on top just to kind of give it a nice base. Also helps protect from like little critters going in of the raised beds. But once we fill that up, we'll put in any kind of leftover geotextile material that we had, some that we had ripped up from the land, some that was relatively new when we were putting in tile drainage. So, and then I had all this extra paper <laughs> wrapping. So I thought, why not do a lasagna layer of that? We have some of our compost, um, our own compost here on the land that we'll put in uh, for another layer. And then we'll use this nice fluffy raised bed mix from Espoma Organic for another layer. And then we have their gourmet compost. So that will go as a, another top layer. And then to protect it from any weed seeds moving in or anything like that, because we're not gonna plant this up this year because it's already approaching winter, but it'll be prepped for spring. And we're gonna go with like one to two inches of uh, our aged wood mulch on top of that. And we'll fill it up to just about here. So we have about this much of uh, real soil or planting space, which is plenty because we're not gonna plant, the deepest plant we're probably gonna plant in here is the carrot. Um, so I have a whole plan of how I'd want to actually plant this, which I'll show you. But for now, we're just gonna be heads down putting in these layers and at least we'll get this uh, first bed done um, because like I said, we kind of ran out of uh, geotextile material. So we'll probably need to get some more. We are in the process here. <laughs> it's a little messy. So I just started to put the compost in the lower layer, and then I am adding this Espoma raised bed mix, and I'm just trying to let this go a long way because we have, uh, I just counted, 42 bags. So I'll use 21 over here and 21 over in that other one, and we're just going to spread it out over the way. I'm going to fill it up just to this edge, basically. So. The land and sea compost is gonna go in, so I'll probably spread that as a thin layer across. All right, so let me take you through the layers that we've done here. Um, so we had some of the big chunky stone that I kind of threw into the base of this that we had left over here. And then we brought in some number two gravel that Steve just helped bring in. And then we had some of this leftover geotextile material so that when we put the soil on top, it doesn't necessarily go and drain all the way down to the bottom. So this will be providing a really good drainage material. Then I had some leftover cardboard and paper because why not? We'd either be composting this or recycling it. Why not use it for organic matter? So I put that right here. And then we had this uh, vermicompost compost that we've had um, that we've been using in all our raised beds and uh, garden beds as well. Then we took the Espoma organic raised bed mix, which you could see here. And then we had the land and sea compost, which is a really thin layer. And I saw some really good mycelium actually growing in here as well. So that's great. And then we have our aged hardwood bark mulch that we're applying to the top. And this will basically help retain the moisture. And if there's any weeds that grow in there, they're gonna be really easy to pick out. So that's all the layers that we're putting in here. And we should be good to go come spring. We'll plant the plants in here. And geez, I think this is gonna be a really great place to, to plant them. And then we'll just top it off with compost as we grow. So this is what it looks like with the geotextile material. And what I'm gonna do with this, it, it literally just covered enough. We just had enough, look at that, it's crazy right to the end. But these edges, what I'm gonna do is get some of our leftover cardboard that we've been saving up because we go through a lot of cardboard here. 
in the landscape. And I'll just edge that as well, because why not? Um, that way it'll protect the soil from draining into the stones. And then this will just be really good drainage and protection also from underneath. So you won't have any kind of animals trying to burrow into this stone or coming up in the stone in these raised beds, uh, the vegetable beds, these will all be pretty much vegetables and like edible flowers, herbs, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I'll show you those plans in a little bit, but for now, I'm gonna get stuck into this. Alright folks, so we are in from filling up the stone raised beds and I'm so glad that we got it together and got it done by the winter and that they'll be ready for spring because it's very similar to how we actually treated the orchard. We had the orchard beds pretty much prepped and ready to go for spring. So I didn't have to worry about filling them, I could just actually plant them up and then I could put like top them up with compost and things along those lines. So. I am so glad that we got that done. And you know, I really use like the end of fall and winter for planning, maybe not planting, but for planning the garden beds. And I'm going to take this opportunity to share with you some of the plans that I put together. And again, these are tentative plans, you know, plans change of course, and we have to be, you know, aware of that and open to that. I have specific varieties of vegetables and fruits that I would like to plant but I think that's too granular for what I wanna to communicate today. I'm just going to share broadly the plants that I'd like to actually try and plant in the stone raised beds. So a few things that really come to mind. One is I want these plants to be relatively short. So I would say roughly two feet or less because if they get too big and too bushy or if they're kind of like trellising plants, they could look a little unsightly and will you know, basically take away the view of the gazebo. So in a way, this is a utilitarian place because we're going to be growing our vegetables and fruits in this community garden area. But it's also an aesthetic place, which is it's kind of the central part of the, the land. And it's a place that we want people to be able to utilize, like maybe come out, have their tea or coffee, or chat with friends or have a get together in the middle of the, the trellis area. Maybe we'll have events there eventually. So we want this to be relatively good looking too. And um, I'm not going to have like a giant huge trellis in the middle of one of these raised beds is basically what I'm saying. I also wanted to think about um, plants that we, can, we might be able to go out and pick regularly. So if we want to have a sandwich or a salad or anything, can we go out and pick like some lettuce leaves, things along those lines. Obviously some of these plants um, will only be able to be picked at certain parts of the season. So for instance, like celeriac, which I absolutely love. We, we all love it. I love making it into various different dishes. Um, that's something that's probably gonna be uh, picked later. You could even plant it a little bit later. Uh, what's another great example? Parsnips, you know, you really don't actually pull those out of, out of the ground until you have a late frost. They will even actually keep over winter and then you could harvest them in spring. So there's lots of different plants that I, I'm thinking of planting in here that uh, I'll probably also plant in the, the orchard area as well. I don't know if I'm gonna grow these out as seeds. I don't really have like a cold frame or a little greenhouse where I could start seeds. We're gonna be renovating this space. I mean, I guess I could assemble like one of those uh, janky like grow lights um, downstairs in the basement if we're finished renovating, those things like that. But I'd like to actually grow my own seeds because there's specific varieties of plants, as I had mentioned, that I'd really like to grow. That's again, too granular for 
getting in today because I want to keep this like broad stroke. But let me just get to it and share a bit more of what I have on my screen. So this is a little schematic that I put together. You could see obviously the gazebo in the middle and the stone raised beds on the outsides flanking the gazebo. And you'll see that I have all these different colors and you'll see I have a key over here. So this is just broadly the plants that I'm looking to grow. So arugula, beets, bush beans, borage, carrots, calendula, celery, cornflower, celeriac, chamomile, lettuce, marigold, nasturtium, nigella, oregano, peas, parsley, parsnips, radish, rosemary, strawberry, spinach, and thyme. And the ones that I put in yellow are essentially this kind of golden orange yellow. Uh, they're essentially gonna be more like flowers, herbs, or smaller plants. So like strawberries, arugula, lettuce. And I kind of just dotted them throughout because they're the types of plants that kind of play nicely with everyone and kind of fit into little areas. So uh, just keep that in mind. That's why they're dotted out and they're slightly smaller than the larger circles that we have here, which is primarily the, the bigger vegetables. So I have like carrots and bush beans and peas and beets and radishes and things like that. Radishes could actually be pretty small, but I, I plan to actually plant uh, quite a bit of radishes. And radishes, as I'll show you shortly, actually play very nicely with other, they're kind of like lettuce, like lettuce and peas and radishes. Um, when you're thinking about companion planting, which we'll get into, uh, what, what plants actually play nicely or are good neighbors to one another. Uh, you know, those are, those are ones that actually uh, kind, of, kind of fit into the gaps and fit well between various different plants. So to take this into a more broader look, and that now that I've showed you a little bit more of my uh, plan, here are just a schematic to show you companion plants. And I might have not created all the companion connections, if you will, but the concept around a companion plant are what are plants that actually work well together? Do they actually benefit one another? For instance, do by planting one plant next to another, does it make that specific plant taste better? Does it help break up the clods of soil in order for another plant to, to grow better? Does it attract a specific pollinator or beneficial insect next to the other plant? Um, does it take up a, a different soil space? So for instance, like a carrot grows really deep, but then you might be able to plant, uh, like for instance, a parsley around it because it doesn't necessarily grow deep. Um, so these are certain things that you could kind of consider and you could also see what plants actually don't work well with one another but I pretty much concentrated on the companion plants that create interesting connections together. So let's just like blow through this. I don't have to belabor this, but here we go, carrots. You could see that it works really well with strawberries, peas, and radishes. So I really considered that when planting those next to one another. So if you go back to the visual that I showed you of the two stone raised beds, you'll see that I actually planted plants that work really well together. And I will note that I didn't put like lettuce in here or things along those lines because lettuce pretty much like works with a lot of different plants. So I just worked with the ones that were a bit more persnickety or the ones that are going to take up like a lot of space within the beds. All right, here's the next one with radish and you can see that it works well with like parsnip, beets, peas, and carrots. Parsnip, little lonely parsnip, <laughs> doesn't play nicely with many others that I'm actually planting in the bed. So um, that one is gonna be next to a radish. It also, it also works with, well with some of the herbs as well. So you know that one will be flanked by a number of herbs or medicinals, for example. And then beets, beans, and radish work well with beets. I'm sure it works well with like spinach or lettuce or arugula too. Um, I didn't you know, care to make that connection here. Celery works well with spinach and beans. Peas, it's kind of a, one of those uh, plants that works well with a lot of different plants. And I should say peas, these are not gonna be the trellising kind. I'm gonna try to stay with like a bush pea. So you could see that celeriac, spinach, strawberry, carrots, radish plays nicely with all of those. Beans, same thing with the beans. You could get a trellising or a pole bean or you could get a bush bean. 
I'm gonna stick with the bush beans here in, this, uh, in these beds. So you can see celery, beets, and strawberry works well with some of these bush beans. Then celeriac, which again, I love. It's probably one of my favorite vegetables. Works well with peas and spinach. It also works particularly well with marigolds, for instance. So I have a bunch of marigolds that are planted around celeriac. But again, I didn't really care to put the flowers like the calendula, chamomile, borage, nigella, things along those lines in this schematic because these schematics, I will say, could get very convoluted and very complicated. And that's not the goal of this. It's not to say like, look at these 60 different plants that I'm growing and all the different schematics. No, you're really just trying to distill the information down and to make it easy for you to visualize so that you could plan your bed better. All right, here we go. Spinach. So you can see spinach works well with celeriac, peas, celery, and strawberry. Strawberry now. All right, so strawberry works well with spinach, beans, peas, and carrots. And strawberry is like one of those like pocket plants. You could like fit it into all these different places. I see that you know, I have like little spots where I'm planting strawberries, but I'll probably end up planting like 30 of them and they'll just like spread. You usually don't harvest a lot of strawberries the first year. Many people will uh, pick off their blossoms. I did that this year in the orchard so that they really put energy into their rhizomes and they kind of spread outwards. They're stolons, I guess. They're probably technically considered stolons, but they'll actually spread out onto the ground and focus on producing fruits more in the second year. So you might wanna consider that. I think strawberries are gonna do exceptionally well in this bed, it's just my assumption, but I think that they might actually spread out through the cracks of the stones because it's a dry stone wall and so they, they could actually seep out through the cracks and maybe hang out their little berries on the other side. I mean, we'll see what they end up doing. Um, I'm pretty eager to see whether any of these plants do well in that bed and where to position them in relation to the sun because eventually they do all get overhead light, right? But some of them are situated more towards the north, some of them are situated more towards the west or the south, depending on which part of the bed that we plant. And I think that we could, uh, we could like work that in our favor. So for instance, maybe a really sun-loving plant like a, uh, like, uh, you know, rosemary, for instance, we could put more on the south side and then uh, let it, the lettuces, for instance, or the arugula, we could put that more closely to the north side. I kind of thought about that when I'm, I was planting and considering these beds, but you, know, you don't know until you plant them and you observe it in the first year. And basically next year is gonna be our first planting season in those stone raised beds. So I'm very eager to see how this turns out and how the plants perform in those elevated stone raised beds because this is something that we haven't tried before. But that's it, that's the plan, and I hope this uh, framework is actually helpful for you. Again, this is kind of how my brain works. This is how I try to visualize things and plan things into the future, so I'm not just, you know, have a bunch of seeds and have a bunch of plants and just stick them willy-nilly wherever, um, which could probably work for some people, but I like to plan a little bit more and then just modify that plan as I go. All right, guys, thank you again for the support on this channel. If you care and you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button. And if you wanna see what these videos come into your inbox, hit that notifications bell because as I've learned, you know, even though you subscribe to a channel, you don't always get notified that the videos are releasing unless you hit that notifications bell. And, um, and yeah, the support really matters because we're actually reinvesting 10% of our Google AdSense proceeds back into community projects. So we're looking at a new community project now it's a community park that a lot of folks actually pass through. It's next to a school, and they're looking for some funds in order to be able to create uh, more handicap um, thoroughfares and better walkways and things along those lines. So that is something that we are actually considering, and we were able to give to the Community Supported Agriculture program at Muddy Fingers Farm as well. So really, honestly, your support really does go a long way, and we so appreciate it. And we hope to create more awesome videos for you as well in the future. So tune in and I'll see you later. Bye guys.